July 1st marks the 25th anniversary of the handover of Hong Kong to China, before which Hong Kong's landmark and world-famous jumbo floating restaurant had sunk unexpectedly in the South China Sea on June 19th. The owner of the restaurant, Aberdeen Restaurant Enterprises, confirmed the news on the evening of June 20th. Hong Kongers commented online, Jumbo Seafood Restaurant is a reflection of Hong Kong's fate, that is, Hong Kong is going down the drain. Some netizens commented that the seafood boat is the Hong Kong version of Titanic, which once thought it would never sink, but who knew it would come to the end of its life so quickly. The seafood floating restaurant was officially opened in 1976 with the appearance of a Chinese palace. At night, it looked like a pearl on the sea, attracting countless tourists. For more than 40 years, it was a popular landmark in Hong Kong and enjoyed the reputation of the world's largest seafood restaurant. Around 1970, Hong Kong's electronics, watch, and toy industries became the leading manufacturing industries. Watch and toy exports once ranked first in the world. However, in 2019 and 2020, Hong Kong's economy began to enter a downturn. The Jumbo Seafood Restaurant also closed down in March 2020 due to a sharp drop in visitors to Hong Kong as a result of the anti-extradition movement and the COVID-19 outbreak. On June 14th, Jumbo Seafood Floating Boat moved out of Hong Kong to Southeast Asia for maintenance. On the day of the farewell, many Hong Kong people came to watch and record its last sight in different ways. On the afternoon of June 18th, when the Jumbo Seafood Boat was traveling to the waters near Paracel Islands in the South China Sea, it encountered wind and waves and capsized. The tugboat company tried to rescue it but failed. It finally turned over in the water on the 19th. No crew members were injured in the incident. Some people have sighed, what is sunk is not a dinner boat, but an era of Hong Kong. The economic impact of the exodus that erupted in Hong Kong since the implementation of the national security law in 2020 is beginning to emerge. Various figures show that a large number of Hong Kong's youth and elite are choosing to leave the city. Their departure is beginning to impact the local labor market and fiscal revenues, and the economic outlook for Hong Kong is alarming. In June 2022, the Hong Kong Inland Revenue Department announced that a total of 2.47 million individual tax returns were issued, compared to 2.62 million and 2.77 million issued in the previous two years, meaning that there were 300,000 fewer tax returns compared to the peak of 2019 to 2020, implying a significant drop in the number of taxpaying businesses or people in Hong Kong. As for the change in figures, IRD officials said they could not confirm whether it was related to immigration. Since the anti-extradition movement in 2019 and the implementation of the CCP's national security law in Hong Kong, on June 30, 2020, there have been sweeping changes in Hong Kong society. The Census and Statistics Department publishes semi-annual population statistics including the net emigration figure, which shows a net emigration of 10,000 people in the second half of 2019 and 96,500 in the first half of 2021 since the beginning of the anti-extradition movement, and a total of 252,000 net emigrants during this period. Another indicator is the Hong Kong Immigration Department's daily net migration of people from the airport. From July 1, 2020 to April 1, 2022, the net migration is over 320,000 people. 320,000 people leaving Hong Kong is equivalent to the disappearance of the entire population in the Yao Tsen Mong district of Hong Kong, one of the most densely populated districts in the world. So what is the impact of 300,000 fewer tax filers on Hong Kong? The director of Hong Kong Cable TV Financial Information Channel said, with an average tax of 30,000 Hong Kong dollars per taxpayer, that is, 3,800 US dollars, it can be calculated that the Inland Revenue Department will be short of 9 billion Hong Kong dollars, that is, over 1.1 billion US dollars. Tax filers may not all have to pay taxes Assuming that only 70% of them have to pay taxes, the Hong Kong government will collect 764 million U.S. dollars less. 
Another set of figures is more alarming. Data from the Hong Kong Labor Department showed that Hong Kong's working population has been declining since mid-2019, with about 3.7 million people left so far, a loss of more than 240,000 from its peak in June to August 2018. And this trend will only intensify, not slow down, much less stop. Many countries, including the UK and Canada, have given Hong Kong students and other immigrants more lenient admissions policies, which will accelerate the loss of the workforce in Hong Kong. Venus Wong, a 16-year-old, is one of the young people who have left Hong Kong. She joined the anti-extradition movement on the streets of Hong Kong when she was 13 and 14 years old. In 2020, when the national security law was implemented in Hong Kong, she chose to leave and came to the United States to study at a prestigious American school. The day the national security law was implemented, I asked my mother if I could leave Hong Kong. My friends all left. My friends left her for England, the United States, and Canada, and etc. Now I post news about Hong Kong on social media, tell stories about Hong Kong, share events that are happening in Hong Kong. The outside world doesn't know how brutal and violent the Communist Party is. They don't know what is really happening inside Hong Kong. I will give some introduction and education in these areas. In fact, the wave of emigration has literally affected every aspect of Hong Kong's daily operations. For example, the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce, the largest employer group in Hong Kong, released a report in March 2022 warning that the loss of talent in Hong Kong was the worst since the 1990s and that both large, small, and medium-sized enterprises were being hit, with 40% of the companies surveyed suffering a more negative impact as a result. Wang Dongsheng, the chamber's chairman and HSBC Hong Kong's top executive, warned at the time that the brain drain, coupled with an aging population, would have a major ripple effect on Hong Kong's economy, making the situation alarming. The financial industry, the most important pillar of Hong Kong's economy, has been plagued by a brain drain. Note issuing banks are banks designated by the government responsible for issuing banknotes. The two of these largest note issuing banks, HSBC and Standard Chartered, have been speaking out in succession on the matter. Many fund investment and asset management companies have adjusted the regional manpower allocation. Hong Kong and Singapore's manpower allocation, from the original 6 to 4 ratio to 4 to 6, or even 2 to 8 ratio. Even the most important regulator of Hong Kong's financial markets, the Securities and Futures Commission, lost 12% of its workforce in 2021, with a quarter of the junior professionals responsible for frontline supervision gone. The Hong Kong economy has already experienced a huge storm in 2022. Hit by the fifth wave of the outbreak, its GDP fell 4% in the first quarter, and the Hong Kong government has already cut its annual economic growth forecast to only 1-2%. to The emigration exodus, the loss of the employed population, mostly young, highly educated and professional, will have a profound impact on Hong Kong's economy and status as an international financial center. However, the Hong Kong government is becoming similar to the officialdom in mainland China. In Hong Kong, where Cantonese is widely spoken, the female chief executive speaks fairly decent Mandarin. We have the national security law in Hong Kong and the new election system that ensure patriots administering Hong Kong. In terms of school education, we remove those bad apples, as I described. Students must receive national education and learn more about the country's history. We also must strengthen publicity and education of the national security law in Hong Kong. The establishment of the systems will definitely play a key role in the stable and long-term implementation of one country, two systems in the future. Therefore, the future of Hong Kong should have a better foundation, with the patriots administering Hong Kong. In fact, the SAR officials should have more ambitions and confidence to map out Hong Kong's future. 
That is, the Hong Kong government and the media have chosen to turn a blind eye to the real problem and are unwilling to acknowledge the fact that a large number of people are moving out of Hong Kong. As a result, their policy making is lagging behind the situation which will exacerbate Hong Kong's economic plight. Once one of the freest cities in the world and a financial hub in Asia, Hong Kong people traditionally lived by universal values, but this has gradually changed since 1997 following its return to the Chinese Communist regime. In particular, the implementation of the national security law in Hong Kong on June 30, 2020, stripped away the pretense of one country, two systems, no change for 50 years, and completely destroyed the rule of law and judicial independence of Hong Kong, revealing the true color of the CCP's fear-based regime. On June 19th, the State Council of China announced the appointment of 26 key officials of the 6th government of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. After the wave of protests against extradition three years ago in the Hong Kong national security law to suppress Hong Kong in all aspects, the new team is observed to have a strong police style. The U.S. sanctioned 11 Hong Kong and Chinese officials, seven of whom are members of the Hong Kong government. The sanctioned officials include the incumbent chief executive, Carrie Lam, who is unable to use banking services and receives her salary in cash. Chief executive-elect, John Li Jia Chao, who spent 34 years as a police officer before rising to become secretary for security has overseen the crackdown on Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement. He is also on the same list of U.S. sanctions. The announcement of the 26 key officials' appointments comes less than two weeks before a new government takes office on July 1st. Although Hong Kong's opposition has disappeared under high pressure, some overseas Hong Kong people have initiated a joint signature, refusing to recognize Li Jia Chao as the chief executive. According to Radio Free Asia, the campaign was initiated by former Hong Kong legislator Clara Chung, who moved to the UK and several overseas groups formed by Hong Kong people. The letter states that only 1,461 members of the election committee were entitled to vote out of a population of more than 7.4 million in Hong Kong. Although Li Jia Chao, as the only candidate in the chief executive election, received more than 99% of the votes, he can only represent the will of a very small number of Hong Kong people. The letter bluntly accused Li of being a puppet chief executive, appointed by Beijing and lacking public mandate. Of course, the official Chinese media is trying to portray the new chief executive in a different light. First of all, the executive and the legislative uh, institutions, they have uh, good cooperation and good exchange so that the eventual solution that is designed uh, will be uh, for the overall benefit of Hong Kong practical and achievable. That's the first thing. The second thing is the legislative members have good uh, liaison and good foundation uh, with uh, the community in the districts. And if they reflect uh, these views, wants and desires, effective to uh, the executive uh, body, which is the government, uh, then uh, the solutions that will be designed will be most direct and meet the needs. In other words, the supply side meets exactly the demand side. It is widely rumored that Xi Jinping, the CCP leader, will come to Hong Kong on July 1st to attend the celebration of the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to China. Although it has not been officially confirmed whether Xi will come to Hong Kong, many of those invited to the ceremony have been notified on June 20th that they have to work in a closed loop for a week before July 1st and stay in a hotel in isolation the day before the event. On June 20th, People's Daily, the top official media outlet of the CCP, published a 2,000-word article titled Hong Kong's Development Has Always Been Close to My Heart, which played up Xi Jinping's feelings for Hong Kong. Some analysts believe that it can't rule out that the official media is trying to create a festive atmosphere for Xi Jinping's visit to Hong Kong. The article made a rare omission of references to black violence, national security law, national security, 
new electoral system and patriots rule Hong Kong. Instead, it emphasizes development in one country, two systems, in several places, as if it didn't want to touch the aching heart of Hong Kong people. In our opinion, if Xi Jinping comes to Hong Kong, he will certainly deliver a speech with content worthy of attention, as it will have something to do with whether Hong Kong will follow the path of economic development or the path of maintaining stability with national security as the priority. However, given the core philosophy of the CCP, it is no longer possible for Hong Kong to regain its former economic and social vitality in the future.